what's happening guys so today i thought i'd do a video on Ortec and where they fit in the nissan family of things so basically Ortec is a lesser known marquee brand uh, of nissan which stands for automotive technology or hence the Ortec, and it was established in october of 1986 when shinchiro or shinichiro sakurai um, the inventor of the Prince Skyline was discharged from hospital. Uh, upon his return to work, the Nissan president uh, created the Autec company and assigned Sakurai as the head of it. Two years later, Autec had finalized a couple of designs and was ready to take it to the local market. So this is a picture of the Prince Skyline. So apparently they've drawn a lot of, a lot of uh, designs from this original design and yeah, look, it, for me, I can kind of see a bit of it, especially within the R31 sedans and and the R34 sedans, um, but not so much in the coupes, so to speak. But um, yeah, you can see basically he did a lot of a lot of great things for the company, and they trusted him enough to basically look after a whole pro project of of developing vehicles for Nissan. So Ortec, um, it's 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 a weird brand because. You've got Nissan, which is your Nismo Motorsport International, and then you've got Ortec, which basically started tuning cars, um, but then went into a different direction, so to speak. So we're going to talk about, I'm not going to go through all the vehicles because it does get a bit boring because they don't really do that many cool cars, but we're going to go through the fan favorites of basically what um, their more known cars are and what some of their more lesser known cars are. So basically the first car that they released was in the S chassis range, Sylvia's um, S13 to be precise. And this particular model was uh, was the, a Sylvia convertible based on the S13K Limited. Um, so there were limited productions of these in Japan. However, the American market, they were mass produced and they were sold with the 240SX body, which is basically a 180SX uh, convertible. Now, one thing I found really interesting is that the that these came with a CA18 DET engine, turbo engine, and was only available in automatic. Americans didn't get that. They only got the K24A naturally as spread engine. So that to me was a bit weird. Um, however, I don't know why they, they did that. Um, but look, it's, it's one of those cars where um, you're not really sure what what you're going to get but um this is a picture of the s uh or the, sorry the ca18 engine i don't know whether that's actually the turbo one or not but um yeah that's what it is so next is the autec s14 Sylvia, also known as 200sx i couldn't find very many good pictures on this but basically in 1997 uh this autec version k was released um, most distinctive feature was the high rise spoiler at the back um while inside, the inside had Momo steering wheel and the turbo cluster that was in the R32 GTR, just without the uh, torque split of where the, the power was going. And funnily enough, this car was only available in two colors, uh, which I'll get to that shortly, but it had an SR20 DET that produced 184 kilowatts, about 250 horsepower. Um, so yeah, it was, was probably one of their more more well-known cars uh, because it had the the Ortec body kit on it as well. Now it was only available in LS1 Deep Fuchsia or WK0 Pearl White. So we'll move on to the S15 now. Uh, three versions tuned by Ortec, Varietta and Style A. Not my favorite of the of the Ortec cars but um, you've got to mention them because it's an S15 really. So this one here was the tuned by Ortec. Um, it was released uh, with a SR20D, so non-turbo, tuned to 147 kilowatts, uh, about 25 horsepower, or 15 kilowatts uh, less than the Spec R SR20DET. Next is the Varietta, or Varietta, yeah, v Varietta, I guess is how you pronounce it. Uh, this was a hardtop convertible only available as an automatic with the standard SR20D found in the S spec. So um, all around, I, look, I feel like this car would have been a bit boring, but it still looks cool. 
this was the real I guess the real money maker for them which is this came out in, t in the 2000s um, it was a restyled Sylvia uh, called style a and it was very Ferrari-esque for the time this particular model here had the SR20 DET uh, same engine as the spec R um, Sylvia and it was available in four-speed automatic or six-speed manual which was pretty cool all right next we're gonna go on to stages so two models here the wg34 stager 260 rs and the nm35 stager or tech axis so the stager or tech version 260 rs which had the running gear of an r33 gtr uh, weighed um 200 kilos more than an r33 gtr and basically was an r33 gtr in a wagon form so again not too much to say here think R33 GTR four-wheel drive RB2060 TT in manual um, running in a wagon. So that's basically it. Next, things get a bit boring with the stager. So basically, we've got the Autec Axis, which came out with three different engines. Um, one was a V6 turbo, or there was really only two two basic variants that I would even consider to be uh, worth mentioning. So you had the 260, uh, sorry, the 2.5 litre V6 turbo, um, and then you had the uh, 350, uh, both four wheel drives. The one that's 350 is 3.5 litre out of the 350Z, or VG35, and the other one was a uh, V6, uh, 2.5 litre turbo so again when you look at what they what effort they put into the Autec Axis it kind of got a bit boring it was more of a chrome bumper and, and wheels and a body kit um, there was nothing really that wowed me in terms of this car it um, it didn't scream power or anything like that and compared to the standard models there wasn't overly too much to separate it but this is moving on into the into the later 2000s, so 2004, 2005, when maybe they were toning things down a bit, but we'll get to Skylines next, and we'll see what they were able to do with those cars. So we'll start off with the Nissan Skylines now, uh, R31, R32, and R33. Unfortunately, they didn't do an R34 model. I can't tell you why, um, but I've got a feeling it had something to do with Nismo taking control of the performance and tuning brands, so to speak. So R31 Autec Skyline GTS, based on the HR31 GTX, GTS X, uh, limited to 200 units. Um, it was powered by an RB20 DT tuned to 154 kilowatts, which is around about 225 or 220 uh, horsepower, paired with a five-speed manual. Um, the GTS was only available in olive green, which was the signature color of Autec back then. Uh, so this would this would have been about 88, 89. And it was used in their intake manifolds as well with branded Autec logos uh, in that olive green as well. Next, we have your R32s. Now these get a bit more interesting. So 200 R32 GTS4 uh, sedans were taken from Nissan directly and were stripped down and recreated in with Ortex version, which was, so the RB20 DT was replaced with an RB2060E. That's right, a non-turbo RB26 engine uh, that was tuned to 164 kilowatts, around 200 and, 15, 220 horsepower and 248 newton meters of torque. It was this, these cars were literally four door GTRs with the turbos removed. So they had a GTR bonnet and grill, and Autec also added their own uh, front bumper and had pumped out rear guards to match the front guards found on the GTRs. The GT badges were replaced with the Autec oval badge uh, while the boot lid um, sat the distinctive Skyline 26 badge. So these cars were called uh, Skyline 26, obviously paying homage to their engines. They were all four-speed automatics and they were all olive green as well. Uh, so a lot of people in Japan took these cars, took the engines out and installed them into other 
other cars and added the twin turbo setup after they'd been removed. Uh, a few people have also taken these cars and basically taken them and converted them to manual and also added the twin turbos there to make them basically R32 GTR four doors, uh, so to speak. For me, this is, and this is my personal opinion, this is where Autec did their last great thing in terms of what they've been able to do with cars and especially the sports car market. Uh, 1998 the four, was the 40th anniversary of the Skyline and Autec took a handful of R33 GTS 4 sedans, so the four wheel drive versions um, off the production line and did the GTR treatment on them much like the 26. Uh, and basically what they did here was, it was basically in, in essence, a four door GTR, everything was was basically done to make it a four-door r33 gtr so all the running gear the engine the interior the seats the steering wheel basically everything made it so it looked like a four-door gtr now there's only a handful of these uh, available there's actually one for sale in adelaide at the moment um which i'll put a picture of that up for you now but um this was basically the last the last thing they did and they didn't advertise that it was an Autec version I think there was a small sticker on the boot that said Autec version and that's about as far as it went in terms of them advertising themselves which leads me to believe this is when Autec took a step back from uh, the tuning side of things and let Nismo basically take the wheel on this so what have we learned about Autec well, basically, and these are my thoughts only, so this is not everyone's opinion on it. This is just what I think. They were once a brand or tuner that would push the envelope and create not only highly tuned versions of cars, uh, but also stylized cars as well. What they are now is basically a company that applies chrome grills to cars, style packages, as well as making vehicles for leisure, disability purposes, camper vans and uh, life vehicles, mobility vehicles, things of that nature. Um, the whole sports car game and the basic tuner uh, theory and performance bus behind it um, has basically died uh, as far as I'm concerned. In my opinion, I think they passed the torch to Nismo, uh, which is why Nismo is a much more uh, performance oriented and focused brand at the moment. But again, these are just my opinions. Um, I, this is actually the Ortec site that you're looking at now. So as you can see, basically they're very big on styling, uh, on styling cars. And, and you can see here, a lot, of, a lot of their vehicles are just your drab everyday kind of uh, people movers and things like that. There are a couple of Nismo vehicles in there. But apart from that, it's all very mundane stuff, uh, focused on your families and, and people just wanting a car from point A to point B to be a bit better than the, I guess, the standard vehicles. Uh, obviously, the Nismo GTRs there, but look, that's by and by. Um, so look, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It went a bit longer than I expected it to, but this basically gives you an insight on Autec and who they were. Let me know what you would like to see next and um, as always, take care.